Hello everyone. So today is another topic of pharmacology that is skeletal muscle relaxant and we use it abbreviation for this one is also called SMR. Now these are the drug which is going to cause the relaxation of the skeletal muscle. They are going to reduce the tone of the skeletal muscle. So primarily where we are going to use it for the various muscle spasm for the spastic condition but more commonly it is used in conjunction with the general anesthesia to get the muscle relaxation for the surgery. So what are SMR? They are the drug which are used to reduce the skeletal muscle tone. Now how we are going to get the reduce the skeletal muscle tone or how we are going to get the relaxation and paralysis of the skeletal muscle. So it can occur from interruption of the function at several sites along the pathway from CNS to the somatic motor nerve, then motor nerve terminals, nicotinic receptor, motor end plate, muscle membrane and in the last the intracellular muscular contractile apparatus itself. So we are talking about the whole pathway of the this thing from the CNS till the from the CNS to the muscular contractile apparatus. So we are talking about the corticospinal tract or pyramidal tract which is going to control the voluntarily movement. So this is a figure I have taken it from the net. This is a corticospinal or pyramidal tract. It has got two parts corticospinal pathway or tract. It consists of two parts upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. Here with the green line you can see the upper motor neuron. It extends from here from the cerebral cortex to anterior horn of the spinal cord to the anterior horn of spinal cord. Right? And from the anterior horn of the spinal cord till the you can say the muscle fiber. That is the lower motor neuron. So any interruption in the upper motor neuron or a lower motor neuron. Just in the previous slide you have seen upper motor neuron from this one to somatic nerve then to the nicotinic receptor, motor end plate, muscle uh, contractile apparatus anywhere that leads to skeletal muscle relaxation as well as paralysis. So same way we can say the skeletal muscle relaxant they act by two way centrally that is the brain and spinal cord and peripherally. Right? So we classify also in the same way skeletal muscle relaxant centrally acting we have a centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant and we have a peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxant. So this video is about the peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant. So we classify peripheral acting skeletal muscle broadly into neuromuscular blocking agent and directly acting. So directly acting may be dendroline and conine whereas neuromuscular blocking agent why they are called a neuromuscular blocking agent because they act by blocking NM receptor at the neuromuscular junction. NM receptor at the neuromuscular junction. They are further categorized into non depolarizing, also called competitive, depolarizing, and directly, which inhibit directly acetylcholine release. Now, non depolarizing is further of three types depending on the duration long duration, intermediate duration and short duration those with a long acting intermediate acting and a short acting under the long acting we have four drugs dtubocuridine pancuronium doxacurium and pipecuronium intermediate acting may aapka vicuronium atracurium cis atracurium rocuronium and rabacuronium whereas the short acting includes the mevacurium this is another way, same slide I have written it with a hand. So you can see here, just here I want to focus the non depolarizing, it's long acting, intermediate acting and short acting. So all of them they have three alphabets in common that is C-U-R. So if you see 
any drug with the C U R just remember we are talking about the peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant that to non depolarizing or a competitive one now non depolarizing blocker the first one is a deutibucurorin that is a prototype and here curarin we get it from the certain plant extract which was used by native hunters of south america you can see in this figure also as an aero poison as an kya use karte the usko as an aero poison so on the tip of the arrow they used to apply this curare and by this they used to paralyze their prey and tubocurarin first clinically used in 1960 and subsequently we have seen now the classification also long acting intermediate acting and a short acting and then we have a succinylcholine and many synthetic compound they were introduced later on now how this drug it acts mechanism of action of peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant so one thing i have made it clear ki how they are going to act they are going to act by blocking nm receptor at a neuromuscular junction so to make you understand the mechanism of action first you should learn about the physiology of the skeletal muscle contraction so this illustration i have taken it from the basic and clinical pharmacology by katzen it is showing the neuromuscular junction this blue portion that is a nerve and red portion that is a muscle so how the skeletal muscle contraction happens so initially there will be initiation of the impulse and that is going to reach over here once the impulse reaches here then what will happen there will be generation of the action potential so first is initiation then generation of action potential so once action potential that is generated then what will happen this blue blue color this v stands for vesicles in which acetylcholine it is stored what will happen the membrane of this vesicle it get fused with this neuronal membrane and ultimately there is a exocytosis of this acetylcholine at the synapse now post synaptically this acetylcholine it is going to act on the acetylcholine receptor so it is going to bind with the acetylcholine receptor now which receptor here we are talking we are talking about nm type of receptor acetylcholine it acts to two type of receptor muscarinic and a nicotinic muscarinic m1 m2 m3 i won't be taking in detail nicotinic there are further two type nm and nn nn that is present on the ganglion and nm receptor they are present at the neuromuscular junction so here the acetylcholine they are acting where at the neuromuscular junction now which receptor nm receptor now nm receptor what kind of receptor they are they are ion channel linked receptor so ion channel means some ion can move inside so here which ion we are talking here it is a sodium ion there is a inward influx of the sodium ion so this receptor it is like a rosette aapke jo petals hote hain na rose ke uski tarah if you see it from the top so there are five subunits two alpha one beta one gamma and one delta so there are total five subunits now acetylcholine it binds with the two molecule of acetylcholine this and this they are going to bind where they are going to bind with the alpha subunits now they will bind with the alpha subunits once they are going to bind then what will happen there will be opening of this ion channel once this is open there is influx of the sodium ion so acetylcholine it is going to bind with the acetylcholine receptor so you have seen this receptor is ion channel linked receptor so once it binds with the receptor then what will happen there will be influx of the sodium once the sodium get in then what it is going to cause it is going to cause the depolarization of this end plate or there will be development of end plate potential and this end plate potential it is going to generate what 
it is going to generate muscle action it will spread and it is going to generate the muscle action potential and that leads to the contraction so i again revise it so how the skeletal muscle contraction it happens first there is initiation of impulse then it is going to reach at the motor nerve terminal this is going to cause a generation of the action potential then there is a release of acetylcholine this acetylcholine it is going to bind with the nm receptor they are ion channel linked receptor so there will be opening of the sodium channel and influx of the sodium ion that leads to the and plate potential then this causes muscle action potential and ultimately leads to the contraction of the skeletal muscle now once the contraction happens now what is the fate of this acetylcholine this acetylcholine it is immediately degraded by the enzyme that is true cholinesterase or acetylcholinesterase which is very much present over here so acetylcholine it is degraded by this so here important is so membrane again gets repolarized it is ready for the next impulse so acetylcholine yahan pe important hai this is very important point it binds and it unbinds and this is very very important and it is a you can say it is a must for the depolarization to happen again the repolarization that is mandatory just remember this point see acetylcholine it is hydrolyzed by acetylcholinesterase and muscle is again ready for the fresh nerve impulse now coming to the mechanism of action of non depolarizing blocker non depolarizing blocker or a competitive blocker or we are talking about the jisme beta jitne sare hai le long acting intermediate acting and a short acting wo sare kaise karte hain kaam so they are the competitive blocker we are talking about the so this rocuronium they have taken shown this this i have taken it from the lipin cot so rocuronium normally what happens the same it is a nm type of receptor nicotinic receptor at the neuromuscular junction or which type of receptor just now we have talked it is nm type of receptor which is ion channel here it is shown in a different way but same thing ion channel sodium is involved here right sodium ion that is so it is nm type of receptor which is linked with the sodium ion now once you give this competitive blocker what will happen instead of because it is going to compete with the normal substrate now here normal substrate is normal substrate here it is acetylcholine it is this rocuronium it is going to compete with the acetylcholine for which for this site for this it is going to come and bind over here ye yahan pe aake khud lag jayega acetylcholine ki jagah this is going to come and bind over here yahan pe ye this now acetylcholine will not get the place so competitive it is a competitive antagonist so what is competitive antagonist they have affinity but no efficacy always remember the antagonist they do not have any action of their own they just antagonize the एक्शन ऑफ सब्सट्रेट उसको काम नहीं करने देते उनका अपना कोई एक्शन नहीं होता नेवर एवर थिंक एंटामिस्ट आर गोइंग टू एक्सर्ट द अपोजिट एक्शन सो दे हैव एफिनिटी मीन्स दे हैव टेडेंसी टू बाइंड विद द रिसेप्टर यहाँ पे रॉक्यूरोनियम जैसे आके लग जाएगा रॉक्यूरोनियम एंड वंस इट बाइंड इट इज नॉट इन नो एफिकेसी मीन्स इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू ब्रिंग एनी चेंज एनी कन्फर्मेशनल चेंज इन द रिसेप्टर नो कन्फर्मेशनल चेंज नो ओपनिंग ऑफ दिस आयन चैनल नो इनफ्लक्स ऑफ द सोडियम सो देर विल बी no generation of and plate potential no generation of muscle action potential and then there will be no skeletal muscle contraction right so just like a competitive blocker this is also reversible remember it is a surmountable once we are going to increase the concentration of this acetylcholine now how we can give the increase the concentration of acetylcholine by giving anti cholinesterase like neostigmine 
Now what neostigmine will do? So as previously I have told this acetylcholine, it is degraded by acetylcholinesterase, this enzyme. Now anticholinesterases, what they are going to do? They are going to inhibit this. This will inhibit it. Now what will happen? This will inhibit it. So acetylcholine will degrade it. Acetylcholine will stay here in a large amount. So by this, it is going to reverse this. फिर ये आके इसके साथ लग जाएगा। But if you are going to increase the concentration, इसको अगर आप ड्रग को अगर आप ज़्यादा दे देते हो इन हाई डोज़ेस, then what will happen? This is going to directly inhibit this channel. It is going to inhibit directly. Then now even the neostigmine or anticholinesterase that is also a no use. So this is the mechanism of action of non-decolorizing blocker. You can say D-tube curonium हो गया, आपका pan curonium हो गया, vac curonium हो गया, rock curonium हो गया, कोई भी हो गया। Whether it's a long-acting, intermediate, सभी का mechanism of action है ये। They are going to compete with the acetylcholine for the NM receptor. Now coming to the next one, that is the depolarizing blocker. We are talking about the succinylcholine or succinylcholine. हम अब इसकी बात कर रहे हैं। now how this is going to act as the name itself says depolarizing so that means this is also going to cause the depolarization this is also a peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant it also comes under neuromuscular blocking agent so neuromuscular blocking agent one thing is clear they are also going to act where at the neuromuscular junction where they are going to bind neuromuscular junction nm receptor here you can see the same thing the succinylcholine it binds to the NM receptor at which site where the acetylcholine binds. So succinylcholine, once you give the succinylcholine, it get hydrolyzed by the plasma by the typical pseudocholinesterase, it get hydrolyzed and whatever amount is left that comes here at the motor end plate, it comes and binds at the NM receptor where the acetylcholine normally it binds. Now, this succinylcholine, once it binds, it is going to cause what? the opening of this channel and there is influx of the sodium ion you can see and depolarization happens as the name say it is a depolarizing blocker so succinylcholine it has got what it has got affinity now how it differs from the acetylcholine it, acetylcholine it has got affinity plus intrinsic activity of plasma whereas this one it has got the sub maximal intrinsic activity so depolarization that happens that leads to the initial fasciculations and twitching of the muscles now here important is now this succinylcholine it is not hydrolyzed ye ab iski hydrolysis nahi hoti with the acetylcholinesterase which enzyme is present over here now it will stay here it will bind here ye yahi pe bind rehta theek hai even when the next impulse comes acetylcholine also comes so what will happen? This and this. This binds here. So this leads to what? Persistent. It leads to persistent partial depolarization because of the continuous binding of this succinylcholine it is because it is not hydrolyzed by this so it continuously bind with that receptor that leads to persistent partial depolarization now acetylcholine when it comes now what i have told for the depolarization to happen again what is the uh, what is the must uh, is must is it should membrane should repolarize yahan pe kya hai repolarization ho nahi rahi because succinylcholine it is not hydrolyzed by this enzyme then that leads to persistent partial depolarization this leads to flaccid paralysis so succinylcholine there are two phases this just now i have told that is a phase one so in a phase one what happens initial there is a depolarization that leads to fasciculations and twitchings further because it is not hydrolyzed what happens there will be persistent partial depolarization which leads to flaccid paralysis so this is uh, rapid in onset and it consists of 
persistent partial depolarization leads to flaccid paralysis and phase 1 then follows the phase 2. Again, I am revising the phase 1. So, what happens in phase 1? Succinyl choline, it reaches, remember this thing, it reaches neuromuscular junction after being hydrolyzed by pseudocholinesterase. Now, ab ye yaha pe aage, neuromuscular junction mein, yaha pe kiske saath bind karega? It is going to bind with the receptor, NM receptor. Opening, influx of the sodium, depolarize, that leads to muscle fasciculation. Now, it is not hydrolyzed by acetylcholinesterase because hydrolysis ke liye isko kya chahiye? Pseudocholinesterase. Pseudocholinesterase, where it is present? It is present in the plasma, it is present in the liver. So, what will happen? That leads to persistent or prolonged depolarization and resulting in the inactivation of the sodium channel. Transmembrane potential to drops to minus 50 millivolt. Now, the acetylcholine once next it is released from the motor nerve ending but it is not able to generate the muscle action potential. Ultimately, that leads to flaccid paralysis. Now, this phase 1, it follows the phase 2. Now, in phase 2, what happens? Now, still the succinylcholine, still it binds with the receptor. Though the membrane, it is repolarized. Now, succinylcholine, how it is metabolized here at the motor end rate by diffusion. Membrane is repolarized. Succinylcholine still it is present or it binds with the receptor. Now with the next impulse, the acetylcholine it comes but it is not able to bind with the NM receptor. Why? Because of the continuous presence of this succinylcholine leads to what? Desensitization of the receptor. Now receptor get desensitized. Uski sensitivity nidati. So acetylcholine will not be able to bind with the receptor because of the desensitization of the receptor. So phase 1 followed by phase 2. Phase 1 mein aapka kya hua tha? Phase 1 mein there is depolarization that leads to fasciculation twitching followed by the persistent depolarization which leads to flaccid paralysis. And that follows the phase 2. Phase 2 that is the slow in onset. And in a phase 2, what happens? The acetylcholine still won't able to cause the depolarization because now receptor, they are desensitized because of the continuous exposure of the receptor with the succinylcholine. So, this is the phase 2. Now, motor end, it is repolarized, but still the acetylcholine, it is not able to bind and open the sodium channel because of the desensitization of the receptor. So, no muscle action potential, there is a flaccid paralysis. So, this is also called a dual block. This is called succinylcholine, it causes the dual block that is a phase 1 and a phase 2. Now, what is important so far? We have discussed what you can get in the exam. So, most important is here. Dual block. What is the dual block and which drug exert? Dual block, it is by the succinylcholine consists of phase 1 and phase 2. Then another way of asking the same question, mechanism of action of succinylcholine. Even mechanism of action of sometimes they ask. Competitive blocker. Okay. Here, where the students, they get confused. See, succinylcholine and acetylcholine both sound same. And usko dekho, likha bhi hai. SCH and ACL. So, what the students, where they get confused, they think these sounds alike. So, maybe succinylcholine, it competes with the acetylcholine. So, they write in the competitive blocker. They think this is a competitive, there is a competition between these two. So, in the competitive blocker, they write the mechanism of action of succinyl choline itself. So, don't get confused. Just think of this, they are alike. Ek jaise hai. Ek hai bhai hai. So, just like acetylcholine acts, succinylcholine also act. This causes the depolarization resulting in the skeletal muscle contraction. And same way, the succinylcholine, it also causes the depolarization. So, this is a depolarizing blocker. 
and whereas a competitive blocker that is a detumocorrhin that's all for today's video i will continue from here only in my next video thank you